Hey everyone, welcome to this session with a big uh, buzzy word title, Confidential Containers Explained, Demystified, whatever. I'm Samuel Ortiz, I work for Apple. And I'm James McGowan, and I work for IBM. And yeah, we're going to talk about confidential computing, cloud native, containers, Kubernetes, and how we kind of all mix together. So before going there, uh, this was to be this was supposed to be a panel, um, but it's not going to be, to be a, a panel. Um, it was supposed to be a panel uh, with uh, both of us plus three other people: Archana from Intel, and Jiang from Alibaba, and Pradeepta from Red Hat. Um, but yeah, it was basically five speakers, five time zones. Uh, we were supposed to be to do live pre-recording. Uh, yeah, what could possibly go wrong, right? Yeah, try to find uh, the right time for pre-recording something with five different time zones. Uh, we couldn't make it. So we asked for a change, uh, and we're going to give this presentation here. But it's going to be a kind of an hybrid uh, way of presenting. Um, we're going to basically ask some questions and try to answer those questions. So what you will learn today are answers to those questions. What is the project? Um, how does it relate to confidential computing? How does it protect Kubernetes workloads more so than other architectures? How can you use it and deploy it? Uh, what are the use cases for this project? And what's next? But I guess before we start that, um, some questions, interactive nature to start with, wake everyone up. Um, who in the audience, by a show of hands or some other means, uh, is aware of the Confidential Containers project? Okay. Um, uh, who's aware of confidential computing? Ooh. And, and then I guess the last question is, who's aware of what a trusted execution environment is? Okay, well, the good thing is we've got a fair mix. And as I went down that, we had more people aware of what we were talking about. But when we go through the questions and answer them, we're hoping to satisfy everyone's prior knowledge. So. To facilitate that, normally in a panel, we'd have five people, slightly differing views. So as we go through it, Samuel's going to lead you in and draw you in technically. And then I'll bring you back gently to a less technical view as a recap as we go along. So hopefully, we will cater at a level that kind of suits everyone's prior knowledge. But obviously, we'll take questions towards the end. And we'll be here afterwards and, well, all week. So thanks. OK, so we'll start with the definition of the project, or goals and definitions. Uh, so what is Confidential Containers? First of all, um, we've recently been admitted as a CNCF sandbox project. So yay for us. It's, take, it's taken a long time. Um, so we are a CN sandbo CNCF sandbox project. We have a logo, so we're legit. That's it. Uh, <laughs> that's what we are, but not only this. Uh, to and, and Sorry, we yeah. didn't fall out over the choosing of the logo either, which was good. <laughs> so the, the Confidential Continuous Project is uh, a set of open source components. And the goal for this is to, and there are some keywords there that I want you to, to highlight. The goal, the, real, the goal of the project is to seamlessly run Kubernetes workloads in their own confidential computing enclaves, also known as trusted execution environments. Um, there are some very important keywords here. Uh, seamlessly is uh, the, probably one of the most important. And the idea is to, with confidential containers is to say, if you have a definition for pod, for workload, you take that definition, you don't change it. And with confidential containers, we are going to allow you to run that inside a confidential computing enclave, inside a TE. Okay? So seamless and sim the, the, the seamless aspect of the project is very important. And um, with confidential computing in general, and with confidential containers in particular, we want to remove the CSP from the trusted computing base. So basically, with confidential containers, you're going to be able to run Kubernetes workloads without having to trust your infrastructure provider, typically a, a cloud service provider, at all. So you only have to trust yourself and what you give and provide um, to the workload. And last but not least, um, we are aiming, or, and we are supporting multiple uh, trusted execution environment implementations, SCV from, from AMD, Intel TDX, Intel SGX, uh, IBM SE. So we want to be hardware agnostic. We're not bound to a specific implementation of confidential computing. 
So those are the very high level goals of the project. Um, I also want to highlight the fact that this is an open source community, obviously, um, with a, a, a contribution participation from uh, already a bunch of uh, key stakeholders, um, cloud providers like Alibaba and IBM, uh, silicon vendors, so the people who are actually implementing on, in hardware the trusted execution environment, the confidential computing hardware, like uh, AMD, uh, IBM, Intel, ARM is also starting to participate. Those are participating to, to this project. And open source vendors like Red Hat uh, also are contributing. So this is a very high level view of the project. Um, to be more illustrative, this is what it looks like at very high level uh, from a Kubernetes standpoint. So you run on top of a Kubernetes node uh, with confidential computing hardware enabled. And in these diagrams, there's a few very important points. Uh, the first one is that you have a pod and your pod has a dedicated confidential virtual machine. And a comp why a confidential virtual machine? Because uh, in practice, confidential computing is implemented as a hardware virtualization extension. So when you talk about confidential computing, when you're talking about SEV or TDX or SE, you end up actually running something inside a virtual machine. And what we're doing with confidential containers is taking that something, which is your Kubernetes pod, and run it inside a confidential computing virtual machine. So each and every one of your pod with confidential containers will run inside its own TDX, SCV, SGX enclave. And that's the very important point. There's another one, which is the uh, uh, enclave agent. That's a controlling agent that's running inside a virtual machine that kind of sets the uh, computation computing environment. And this is a very high level uh, diagram. We'll go into more details uh, as we answer more questions. So how does that relate to computation computing? How does computation containers use the confidential computing hardware and implementation and features? Um, Again, with confidential containers, each Kubernetes pod gets its own enclave, gets its own confidential computing enclave. What does that mean? Uh, first of all, that means that your Kubernetes pod is going to have its memory encrypted through hardware, but not only memory, it's, it will also, also have its uh, CPU state and hardware state in general encrypted. So the host, the infrastructure owner, the, your CSP, won't be able to see uh, your uh, Kubernetes pod data and Kubernetes pod memory, and won't be able to see your CPU registers, won't be able to see your CPU state. Um, it's, it's, it's that, so we're using the, the memory encryption and the hardware encryption features of confidential computing, but we're also using, with confidential, confidential containers, another very important feature of confidential computing, which is attestation. Uh, running with memory enable is one thing, uh, with memory encryption enable is one thing, but uh, with memory encryption enabled, you, uh, enable, you basically are saying that uh, your host is not able to see what your Kubernetes pod is doing, but you are no guarantee about what your, what your Kubernetes pod is actually running, the software stack that it's running. So it can be, it can be controlled by, the, by, the, by the, uh, the CSP, by the infrastructure owner, and we want to prevent that from happening. We want to control what's actually creating this data that you're going to be encrypting with uh, hardware memory encryption. And to do that, we use uh, attestation, the attestation features of confidential computing. Basically, with confidential containers, you have an enclave stack. So there's a stack that's running inside a virtual machine that's going to run your Kubernetes pods that is trusted and verified through confidential computing attestation. And typically, this is basically remote attestation. So you have an enclave stack that's running inside your virtual machine that's going to be dedicated to your pod. And this enclave stack is trusted. It's something that you can verify from top to bottom that it's running exactly what you need and exactly what you want as a guest owner. Again, to summarize this, um, uh, a computation containers Kubernetes pod will basically use the hardware memory encryption of computation computing for protecting your data while it's in use. But it also will use attestation, measurement, and verification to make sure that what is producing this data is what you own and what you defined, and you can verify this. So if your CSP or infrastructure owner decide to tamper with what you're gonna run inside this, this pod, you are gonna be able to see that and not generate any of the data. 
So you can verify that the data is, is what is provided by the right software stack, and then you can encrypt this data. An illustration of this, this is the high level view. If we go into a little more details, first of all, we have this enclave stack that I, that I mentioned, which covers everything that's your, that your virtual machine, your confidential virtual machine is gonna run from firmware to initardy. So that includes the firmware, the guest kernel, and the guest initardy. Plus an agent, the enclave agent, that's typically part of the, of the initardy. With confidential computing, we are encrypting all this. So all the memory, all the CPU state that this virtual machine is gonna be using leverages confidential computing encryption uh, uh, capabilities to encrypt all of this. And we're also measuring the enclave stack. So all the components that are part of the enclave stack, the firmware, the kernel, the initRD, the kernel command line, all the parameters that you want to add to your measurement, you can measure that. And measuring means that you can verify it. So there's a relying party that's outside of your node that can be used, that can be controlled by you as a guest owner to actually verify that this enclave stack is exactly what you're expecting. So before starting the pod, before running anything on your, on your confidential computing VM, you're gonna be able to verify that what's gonna be running this, this Kubernetes pod is exactly what you expect. Has not been tempered by, by uh, the, the, the infrastructure owner, okay? So you can verify that what this workload is gonna be generating as, part, as, as data is gonna be generated by the software components that you defined and that you want. Okay, next question. How does that protect Kubernetes workload in a relevant and significant way? So as I said, with confidential containers, we are basically taking the host, the infrastructure owner, the CSP, whatever you wanna name it, whatever you wanna call it, we're taking this out of the trust boundary. We're taking, we're taking this out of the trust boundary by, again, using hardware encryption. Um, with hardware encryption, you, you add the guarantee, the hardware guarantee that your host is not gonna be able to see or tamper with your memory and your hardware state. It's not gonna be able to mess with your CPU state, with the, the CPU state that, the, that your confidential virtual machine is running. It's not gonna be able to mess or even look at the memory that your com uh, uh, Kubernetes workload is generating. But that's not enough. If you only have this, uh, you have no guarantee, you don't know what's generating this data. So you need to make sure that what's generating this data is what you defined, what you built, and what you want. And to do that, we're using memory, uh, measurement and, and, and attestation. So the guest runs, again, the enclave stack. The enclave stack is completely measured, verified by you as a guest owner through remote attestation. Once you have this enclave stack booted, verified, attested, and you know this is the right software components that are, that are running, then you can start running your Kubernetes uh, workload. You can start running uh, your Kubernetes workload by actually pulling encrypted container images inside the guest. So this is a major difference compared to the regular Kubernetes workload workflow that we all know about, where you have the host pulling the container images, and then the Kubernetes workload actually running what the host pulled. Container D pulls, stores on uh, your host, and then your Kubernetes, Kubernetes workload uses that as an overlay FS and runs your Kubernetes workload. With confidential containers, the first thing you do is verify that your enclave stacks, the stuff that is running inside a confidential VM that your Kubernetes pod is running on, is verified. Once you have done this, your enclave stack through the enclave agent is pulling the container image and keeping the container image inside the enclave. So the container image, what's, what really matters to you, what your workload definition is kept inside this virtual machine image. It kept inside this, this virtual machine memory and is protected. So basically the host no longer owns the container image and no longer sees and no longer is able to uh, tamper with or modify this container image. To go into more details again, this is the previous diagram. Um, what we do once we verified, once we know that the enclave stack is trusted, the relying party is gonna inject secrets into the uh, confidential virtual machine. Typically the secret is uh, an encryption key. It's an encryption key that you're gonna use to pull a container image that is encrypted and decrypt it inside your virtual machine. 
So you pull an encrypted image from any registry, public, private, whatever. It's encrypted. You keep it, you keep it inside the virtual machine, and you decrypt it with what's been provisioned to you by your relying party after verifying that your enclave stack, the component that the, your virtual machine is running, is verified, and you trust it. So none of this is visible by the host. None of this is visible by the CSP or by the infrastructure owner. So once you provision this, as I said, you're going to pull the container image, you're going to decrypt it, and you're going to start the container image from the virtual machine. Nothing gets out of this enclave of this confidential virtual machine that is fully encrypted and fully protected by the confidential computing hardware. Um, so at this point, having drawn you in technically, Samuel's explained a lot and gone into the detail. I'm going to wind back a bit catering perhaps more for those who didn't answer yes to any of the questions I asked at the start. Um, so to start with, if this technology is out there, we have trusted execution environments, why can't we just use them as runtime? Why do we have to worry about anything else? Well, it comes down to who we trust, and it comes down to thinking of personas and actors. Who is it we trust and who is it we decide not to trust? So as we put this into a more cloud-native perspective, what we're, what's happening here is that it's the person who's driving the workload, driving the pod descriptor, the helm chart, the whatever, that's defining the workload. They're the ones that are inside the circle of trust, or the trust boundary, as it were, whereas the administration of the cluster, whether that be a managed cluster, whether that be somebody with their own, our own company, or whether that be the actual infrastructure upon which we're running, that's outside our trust. So that boundary that we want to put Leaves, leaves the workload inside, but the orchestration and management of it on the outside is such a way that however it's managed can't change the workload that we trust, can't get access to the data, the algorithms, or whatever else that we've got in our workload. And that's the kind of separation that we're aiming for here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we take a trusted execution environment today, it's essentially a secure environment in which you can put your workload, whether it be containers or whatever. And if all you're doing is considering a pure VM approach, a virtual server approach, then you define through your workload the APIs. You define what crosses that boundary. So you're in complete control of what gets into that trusted execution environment just because you control the workload of the application. But as soon as you start to put that into an orchestrated world, into a cloud native world, there are other things that need to cross that boundary to do with the orchestration actions, to do with starting the containers or monitoring what's happened. And if you go to an extreme, there are capabilities that would cross that boundary that, for example, would allow you to uh, execute an arbitrary shell command inside a container, for example, which doesn't really fit with what we're after here in terms of confidential computing. Now, that would be a complete nightmare if you're trying to suggest that your workload is secure if somebody could do something that extreme, as it were. So, I mean, what we're after here is you could use a trusted execution environment to wrap different things, and we could use it to wrap a node, for example. But essentially, the management of the cluster lives inside that. So that's why we settled on um, that boundary around the pod as a way of kind of neatly suggesting that those who are defining the workload can have more control of from inside the pod leaving the management of the cluster to happen as, as normal. And I guess this is the next key point. We're, we're putting some control into the pod. So Samuel mentioned about the pooling of containers. Essentially, what we're driving here is that I want to define a workload that could be deployed in a cluster. And I want to know that it's deployed as I expect it to be deployed. It's deployed into a trusted execution environment. It's using the images that I want, that the orchestration actions that can be carried on out on it are in my control. And so in that respect, I need to be able to define that such that the pod has control over that. Because I can define the workload. That's what happens in the pod. So this is why the pod needs to take more of a control of pulling those containers in. And the way I can be sure that it's deployed as I expect is where we link into the attestation. Because I can measure the environment, that confidential VM in which my pod is running ahead of time. I can control the containers that travel there. If I encrypt them or sign them, then that's something that can be provided as a result of attestation 
so that when it starts, when my workload starts, or whatever combination of pods start, I know the only way they could have started is if they've received the secrets that I've provided and as a result of a testing that the basic confidential VM that I'm expecting to happen is there. And outside that, I don't care what the uh, workload, uh, sorry, what the administrator has done. Yes, they're in control of denial of service and things like that, but that's what their least privilege is. That's what they're supposed to be doing. What I don't want them to be doing is changing my workload, starting it outside a trusted execution environment, getting access to the data that I want to protect or the algorithms that I want to protect. And the last thing that brings this all together is that we don't want to, as Samuel said, we don't want to pursue a completely different paradigm for doing this. That's not what this is about. We want to fit with the experience and expectations that are out there. The last thing we want to do is to change the whole way you would manage a cluster and how that's thought about. We don't want to change the whole way that a workload is, is defined. So there's an element of sometimes new ideas come with some friction that changes what's there before. We are aiming to reduce that friction. So essentially, nothing changes. For the majority of personas and actors and what they do, nothing changes. You still manage a cluster in the same way. You still build containers in the same way. You still deploy them in the same way. But actually, everything changes for those who care about it. Because at that point, you can start to say, right, actually, built my container. Now I'm going to encrypt it and look after that key. And that key is going to be provided as a result of attestation. So there is an element that does change that you're concerned about but you're concerned about it because you're concerned about confidential computing and everything else can remain the same. Which basically means, yes, if you have a workload definition, a pod spec with confidential containers, you're gonna keep the same thing, but there, inside your workload, inside your virtual machine, you're free to define and run it as you wish and define those boundaries. But from a workflow perspective, yeah, nothing changes pretty much. So next question, uh, now that we talked about this, um, how can you use and deploy confidential containers? Um, quickly, because I think, yeah, we're on time. Um, <laughs> as part of uh, confidential containers, uh, we have many components, but one interesting one, which is, it's kind of a, the uh, integration point of the, the whole project is the uh, Kubernetes operator. Uh, so we have an operator for confidential containers that allows you to deploy confidential containers um, as easily as possible uh, inside, your, inside your Kubernetes deployment. Um, basically, that will allow you to deploy the, the, the right runtime, to build the right enclave stack that, that you want, to configure it properly, uh, and deploy that and run it uh, with, the, with, the, with the specific runtime that you define to, through the operator. Um, that runtime, I haven't mentioned it, um, but for most of it uh, is uh, we're using the, the Kata Containers Runtime, uh, which is a natural fit for running Kubernetes, work, uh, Kubernetes pods inside virtual machines. So we're taking this runtime, we're adding some features to it, we're adding some configuration, all, all of this, or most of it is upstream, and we are deploying this to the operator. Uh, and the operator allows you to define your configuration, define your app API boundaries, your enclave stack definition, and build it, and deploy that inside your Kubernetes uh, environment. And again, to keep with our personas here, having drawn you in technically, I'm gonna take a step back again. So if we go to the slide, sorry, yeah. So, ooh, you went backwards. That's confusing me. <laughs> there we go. So why do we care? So we're not here to redefine what the use cases are for confidential computing. They're, they're out there, they're well-trodden path. If you care about your data, if you care about algorithms, for example, in AI, then you're interested in protecting them. Essentially, if you're in industries that have concerns about regulatory requirements or compliance or things like that, or worst case scenario, if you, your very existence as a company depends upon protecting the data that you're privileged enough to be using, then confidential computing is a concern to you. But what we're trying to do here is set it in the context of what does it mean for cloud native? What does it mean to how we would administrate our, our clusters? And this comes down to technical assurance versus operational assurance. And what I mean by that, we can configure a cluster and we can configure webhooks, sidecars, etc., that would check what's happening. But fundamentally, who's in control 
of that access control? Who's control of those webhooks? Is it the person that we want to be in control of that? Because what we're talking about here is trying to have that control or at least certain portions of that control reside with the person defining the workload, not with the person administrating the cluster. So what I mean by technical assurance here is it doesn't matter how the cluster is configured. It's not possible to do certain things because in defining the workload, you have made those things not possible. So essentially, if the cluster or environment in which you're running your workload goes against the things that you've said in the workload itself are required, well, then the attestation will fail. You won't get the secrets. The workload won't run. And so that's what we mean by technical assurance versus operational assurance. And that's that separation of personas where we're putting more of that control into the hands of where we define the workload. Because after all, why should the person administrating the cluster have privileges that allow them to change containers that are running, that allow them going back to the, the, the obvious example, allow them to arbitrarily execute a shell command in a container. So yeah, the use case is, uh, as Jim said, um, I mean, it's, it's not really different from a regular computational computing use cases. Basically, you're taking the infrastructure owner out of the, tr of the trust boundary that gives you a lot of potential use cases. Um, one, one interesting one is that you basically can run your sensitive workloads anywhere where computational computing is enabled. So if you're in a cloud where computational computing is enabled, you take computational containers and you can run it there. You have the guarantee that your infrastructure owner, whatever, whoever it is, is not gonna mess with it. Uh, there's a lot of different use cases there that are interesting. Um, one of them also is, is basically about moving the workloads from your private cloud to public cloud. Public cloud, when, when uh, computational computing is enabled, they become as safe as your private cloud, or maybe even safer, uh, even internally, uh, even in your private cloud. Uh, maybe the infrastructure owner is someone that you don't want to have a look at your workload, even internally, uh, with confidential computing, confidential, con confidential container, sorry, you can run that s safely, at least. So basically moving from private to public, if your public cloud is giving you access to confidential computing, that becomes possible, whatever your workload is. And I think an element of that, the next slide is, is, is kind of the, the what next scenario, as it were. So we're interested in, and we're not claiming that, hey, this solves security. That would be madness to suggest that. I think what we're talking about here is a progression that it's more secure than what was there before, but it's a journey that we're on with confidential containers. And what we really want to do is to start to connect with other groups here to understand how existing projects and existing things in a cloud native world could either take advantage of confidential containers or would work with confidential containers to progress that story, to make it more secure than before, to start that journey to confidential computing. So what's next? Um, well, we're working towards uh, our first uh, official release for confidential, confidential containers. Um, one interesting thing is that if you go back to this slide, for example, um, currently what we're really working on is the all the left hand side of this diagram. Basically the runtime, what's running inside inside a confidential VM. But what we realize is that there's a, well, we didn't realize, but we, we kind of acknowledge that there's a very strong bound between that part and the right hand side, which is basically all the attestation parts, the key brokering service, the attestation service. And when trying to integrate uh, uh, our project with this, we realized that there's a myriad of different projects trying to do this. So we are expanding uh, the confidential containers scope to not only the node side, but also to the attestation side. So we are working on defining a um, protocol uh, that is simple enough for everyone to comply with for attestation service and key brokering service in the confidential containers context. So we're expanding on this. Um, one thing that we are also working on is adding uh, secure storage. Uh, how do you inject data uh, volume inside a confidential VM? And we're defining this. Uh, we have a, a good architecture design and a initial implementation for this. And when we're gonna put all this together, uh, this is where we're gonna have uh, our first release. Uh, hopefully uh, pretty soon in a few 
month, hopefully. So that's pretty much what's next for Confidential Continues. Yeah, so I think we have five minutes for yeah. questions, although we'll be hanging around afterwards. So are there any questions? Uh, I would start first with online question, if you don't online mind. Online questions. So uh, the first question which came through platform, how confidential computing uh, impact security monitoring tools like Falco? Uh, can, can you repeat the question, sir? How uh, CC impact security monitoring tools like Falca? Okay, so this is a this is a very generic. Uh, I think this is a very common question. Um, basically, how do you observe a confidential computing uh, virtual machine? And I think we've been thinking about this. There's no there's no good answer to this. There's no magic you know magic answer for this. But basically, one way we are exploring is 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 about saying if you want to observe something into the confidential computing VM. You're going to have to run sidecars, but those sidecars need to be verified by you as a guest owner. So it's okay to run sidecars alongside your Kubernetes confidential containers pod, as long as you as a guest owner can say, yes, this is the sidecar I'm, I'm expecting. And I'm allowing this sidecar to observe what's happening inside my confidential computing VM. So that's, that's one way to explore it. Um, sidecar and basically allowing the, the, the infrastructure owner to inject anything in the pod is kind of antinomic to the, the whole confidential containers concept. So there will be restrictions. There will be things that you cannot do with confidential containers in that context. And you know, making sure that what you inject inside a pod, inside a confidential container pod, is something that, you can, that can be verified by you as a guest owner is our current answer. Yeah, I mean, it, I'll take the, the backward step again. Some elements of observability have to be in the control of the person defining the workload fundamentally. And, and that's basically whether that be in control of verifying which containers are added for that purpose, or whether it be in control of some other means of controlling what can be logged or monitored within that context, some element of that control has to reside with the workload provider. There are were, there were some questions from, oh. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Nick Vidal. Uh, we actually have an open source project called Anarx, and we, we combine WebAssembly with confidential computing. And we are part, we're part of the confidential computing consortium. And I wanted to ask, uh, are you, uh, of course, you are an open source project. I saw your, your GitHub uh, page. But are you also part of the CNCF or the confidential computing consortium? Is there a, a company or a group of companies behind your project? How, how does that work? Thanks. So. I guess the answer is here. Uh, we are a CNCF sandbox project. And if you look at the bottom of these slides, those are the companies that are currently contributing to the project. So we, we're fully aware of uh, Anarch's existence. And I think this is what James was uh, highlighting. We probably need to talk and understand how those kind of projects can live together. And if there's, you know, maybe there's some way to converge, maybe there's no way to converge, and uh, two different projects different, provide different values. So we need to understand this and, and, and discuss. But yeah, we are a CNCF project. We're not, uh, I mean, we, we participate to uh, the, the Confidential Computing Consortium, but we're not an official part of the uh, CCC. Another question? Hello. Uh, I was interested in finding out how do you, um, if I'm running this framework on a public cloud, you said you have an operator. So how do you attest the operator? How do I know if I'm deploying the operator while deploying the provider doesn't mess in with it and then everything is kind of I, th I think the answer to this is that you, you you can you can't really do this so if the if the CSP really wants to mess with this it, it can but then you won't be able to to attest and verify the, the workload that you run the only thing that you care is that you can when you start a workload when you ask for your confidential computing confidential containers nginx workload to be running you want to make sure that this is the right container image so you can you can change the operator. You can change the runtime that you that you run. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What you really want is to this runtime to be able to start your confidential container, and then you can verify what you're running. That's that's all. Yeah, I mean, care about. it comes back to to the whole attestation flow. You have to accept that that. A uh, rule that's uh, administering your cluster can change what's there, but at the end of the day, if that workload starts outside of that confidential VM that's measured, it won't receive 
the secrets required for your workload to actually start. And those could be things like simple keys to decrypt containers. It might be certificates for TLS. It could be anything like that that we're exploring. But some element of that configuration is required for that workload to start. And it won't only start if it's starting in that attested confidential VM. But the elements which are part of the operator logic, they could be compromised. It just depends what you have in there, right? They could be compromised, yes, but if you, it, it doesn't, it, even if they're compromised, but you're still running, and if you, if, if they can verify, so let's say the, the operator changes the, the guest kernel, okay? You change the guest kernel, this is gonna be measured, this is gonna be verified, and the attestation is gonna fail. So if, if, the, if the CSP changed the guest kernel that your confidential container is gonna run, you're never gonna be able to run your container image. And, and maybe there's an element here to push on. We would not imagine that the operator is also setting up the attestation uh, flow, as it were. That, that measurement that's recorded in the attestation service needs to be done outside of the operator. So the control of that is not within the control of the Kubernetes administrator. Because if they could control that, then you're quite right. They could change anything they want, and then you wouldn't know. But measurement and attestation is done by the hardware. So if you change the kernel, for example, attestation will fail. You will never run your uh, encrypted uh, privilege, uh, uh, sorry, protected workload in that case. So. Uh, just one last very quick question, and afterwards we can continue discussion sure. on the corridor. So, yeah, thank you for the talk. I might talk. Uh, one quick one. Is, I saw the attestation part was uh, like outside of the workload. Is there any way for the workload to uh, assess that it's running in a confidential container? Like, or does it make any sense? Uh, the, the the workload. Uh, so. You have two, two parts on the workload. The, the first one is the what we call the enclave stack, which is basically what boots the confidential uh, virtual machine. That actually talks to the hardware and gets the hardware to generate the attestation report. So the hardware has measured the firmware, the kernel, and the, the component that actually even that actually asks for the attestation report. So yeah, but let's say as an application developer, right? Let's say I want to just my container to double check. You can, can, it, can it? Yeah, yeah. You you can definitely yeah. do that if you if you know how to do this. Basically, you need to talk to the uh, to the kernel API to actually get the attestation report and make sure that you're running on the right hardware with the right components. Yes, you can. No more questions. No, no more time for questions. Okay. <laughs> no, more, no more time. All right. So we we'll be around. Um, yeah, we'll hang around at the front if anyone has any last questions. Um, please come up and talk to us. Thanks. And on Friday, there's a CNCF tag. <laughs> yeah, there's a CNCF tag runtime talk on Friday where uh, we'll have five more minutes to talk about confidential contagions. So 